Lesson 73. The Record Holder. First listen, and then answer the question. Did the boy go where he wanted to? Children who play truant from school are unimaginative. A quiet day's fishing or eight hours in a cinema seeing the same film over and over again is usually as far as they get. They have all been put to shame by a boy who, while playing truant, traveled 1,600 miles. He hitchhiked to Dover and, towards evening, went into a boat to find somewhere to sleep. When he woke up next morning, he discovered that the boat had, in the meantime, traveled to Kalai. No one noticed the boy as he crept off. From there, he hitchhiked to Paris in a lorry. The driver gave him a few biscuits and a cup of coffee and left him just outside the city. The next car the boy stopped did not take him into the center of Paris, as he hoped it would, but to Perpignan on the French-Spanish border. There he was picked up by a policeman and sent back to England by the local authorities. He has surely set up a record for the thousands of children who dream of evading school. Lesson 74. Out of the limelight. First listen and then answer the question. Why was their disguise too perfect? An ancient bus stopped by a dry riverbed and a party of famous actors and actresses got off. Dressed in dark glasses and old clothes, they had taken special precautions so that no one should recognize them. But as they soon discovered, disguises can sometimes be too perfect. This is a wonderful place for a picnic, said Gloria Gleam. It couldn't be better, Gloria, Brinksley Mears agreed. No newspaper men, no film fans. Why don't we come more often? Meanwhile, two other actors, Rockwall Slinger and Merlin Greaves, had carried two large food baskets to a shady spot under some trees. When they had all made themselves comfortable, a stranger appeared. He looked very angry. Now you get out of here, all of you, he shouted. I'm sheriff here. Do you see that notice? It says no camping in case you can't read. Look, Sheriff, said Rockwall, don't be too hard on us. I'm Rockwall Slinger, and this is Merlin Greaves. Oh, is it? said the Sheriff with a sneer. Well, I'm Brinksley Mears, and my other name is Gloria Gleam. Now you get out of here fast. Lesson 75, SOS. First listen and then answer the question. How did the woman get help? When a light passenger plane flew off course some time ago, it crashed in the mountains and its pilot was killed. The only passengers a young woman and her two baby daughters were unhurt. It was the middle of winter. Snow lay thick on the ground. The woman knew that the nearest village was miles away. When it grew dark, she turned a suitcase into a bed and put the children inside it, covering them with all the clothes she could find. During the night, it got terribly cold. 
The woman kept as near as she could to the children and even tried to get into the case herself, but it was too small. Early next morning, she heard planes passing overhead and wondered how she could send a signal. Then she had an idea. She stamped out the letters SOS in the snow. Fortunately, a pilot saw the signal and sent a message by radio to the nearest town. It was not long before a helicopter arrived on the scene to rescue the survivors of the plane crash. Lesson 76 April Fool's Day First listen and then answer the question. What was the joke? To end our special news bulletin, said the voice of the television announcer. We're going over to the macaroni fields of Calabria. Macaroni has been grown in this area for over 600 years. Two of the leading growers, Giuseppe Maldova and Ricardo Brabante, tell me that they have been expecting a splendid crop this year and harvesting has begun earlier than usual. Here you can see two workers who, between them, have just finished cutting three cartloads of golden brown macaroni stalks. The whole village has been working day and night, gathering and threshing this year's crop before the September rains. On the right, you can see Mrs. Brabante herself. She has been helping her husband for 30 years now. Mrs. Brabante is talking to the manager of the local factory where the crop is processed. This last scene shows you what will happen at the end of the harvest. The famous Calabrian macaroni eating competition. Signor Fratelli, the present champion, has won it every year since 1991. And that ends our special bulletin for today, Thursday, April 1st. We are now going back to the studio. Lesson 77, a successful operation. First listen and then answer the question. Did the doctors find out how the woman died? The mummy of an Egyptian woman who died in 800 BC has just had an operation. The mummy is that of Shepenmut, who was once a singer in the Temple of Thebes. As there were strange marks on the x-ray plates taken of the mummy, doctors have been trying to find out whether the woman died of a rare disease. The only way to do this was to operate. The operation, which lasted for over four hours, proved to be very difficult because of the hard resin which covered the skin. The doctors removed a section of the mummy and sent it to a laboratory. They also found something which the x-ray plates did not show, a small wax figure of the god Dumatef. This god, which has the head of a cow, was normally placed inside a mummy. The doctors have not yet decided how the woman died. They feared that the mummy would fall to pieces when they cut it open, but fortunately, this has not happened. The mummy successfully survived the operation. Lesson 78 the last one first listen and then answer the question for how long did the writer give up smoking after reading an article entitled cigarette smoking and your health i lit a cigarette to calm my nerves i smoked with concentration and pleasure 
as I was sure that this would be my last cigarette. For a whole week, I did not smoke at all, and during this time, my wife suffered terribly. I had all the usual symptoms of someone giving up smoking, a bad temper and an enormous appetite. My friends kept on offering me cigarettes and cigars. They made no effort to hide their amusement whenever I produced a packet of sweets from my pocket. After seven days of this, I went to a party. Everybody around me was smoking, and I felt extremely uncomfortable. When my old friend Brian urged me to accept a cigarette, it was more than I could bear. I took one guiltily, lit it, and smoked with satisfaction. My wife was delighted that things had returned to normal once more. Anyway, as Brian pointed out, it is the easiest thing in the world to give up smoking. He himself has done it lots of times. <laughs>